future. Today we are going to start with our uh, Microsoft Dynamics EX 2012 Development 1. In Microsoft Dynamics EX, we have uh, three, four courses, Development 1, Development 2, 3, and 4. But today uh, we are going to start with our uh, Development 1. Let me share this screen, uh, presentation with you. This is our uh, Microsoft curriculum. So first of all, whenever uh, you will start with the session, you will get a virtual machine access where username is administrator and password is capital P, A, dollar, dollar, W, zero, R, D. So for your lab purpose, you, you need to connect with that virtual environment and you need to pass these credentials there. Now, let's start with our session. Here we can see in this course, we have four modules. First one is your architecture. Then the second module is data dictionary. Third one is your user interfaces. And fourth one is your security. So let's start with our first chapter, that is architecture. See, before starting with the architecture, let me give you a brief overview about Microsoft Dynamics AX. We know that uh, nowadays we are using Microsoft Dynamics AX, Microsoft Dynamics NAV, and Microsoft GP. Like uh, in your organization, if you want to manage your financial data, so for that we are using the Microsoft ERP solutions, and GP is for very small level of companies then for mid-level either we are using NAV or for enterprise level we are using the AX. So today we have to start with our Dynamics AX architecture. Here we can see the features of Microsoft Dynamics AX, the architecture, development environment, model driven architecture and licensing and configuration. So in your first lesson let's start with our features of AX. See, if we are uh, comparing our Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 with our older versions, so in your older versions for uh, each and every uh, different companies, we were using different databases. Whereas in your 2012, for all the companies, we have only a single database. That is your uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX DB. Now, again, let's uh, have a look the difference in your database architecture. In your previous versions, for your uh, data, for your uh, model store, and for your resources, everything was consolidated in a single database. Whereas in 2012, we have two databases. One is for your data that is responsible to store your model store as well. And then the uh, another one is to store the configuration. Whereas in your AX 2012 R2, we have three databases. One is for your data. Second one is to store your model store. And then third one is your baseline database. So means now we can see in the older version, we were only using a single database. In AX 2012, we have two databases. Whereas in the newer version, we have three databases. So in uh, the functional features here, single database means your everything, that means your all the companies and everything is in a single database in your Microsoft SQL Server. Because we know that for AX, the backend is your SQL Server. Then you have your highly integrated. Uh, in your AX, like we can use AX rich environment for your development purpose. We can also use Microsoft Visual Studio as well as we can take advantage of your SQL Server reporting services, SQL Server analysis services. So means your AX is giving us a highly integrated environment to perform our task. Then it's also your dimension based. Then we have some advanced features. In your advanced features, like I told you, we can take advantage of your SQL Server different services like uh, SQL Server reporting services, 
that will help you to use SSRS reports in your AX environment. And even in your older versions, we were using MOFX reports. Whereas nowadays, your AX is completely integrated with reporting servers. So whatever the reports you are going to create by using your AX or by using your reporting services, everything is get stored in your reporting server. Then let's take the example like uh, you are working for a company or you are working for an organization and you have branches in different areas like let's say uh, in uh, US you have a head office in New York and then uh, you have branch office either in Chicago than uh, New Jersey and uh, some other areas. In that scenario definitely you need not to worry about currency and language but what happened if you are working in different countries like you have head office in New York and you have another branches either in UK in Dubai or in India so in that scenario we have to configure multi currency as well as multi language so that is also available in your AX 2012 so these are your functional features now in your development environment see this module is just an overview and for each and every point we have detailed information as well so right now I'm just giving you the overview in your development environment we can use integrated development environment that is your rich client that help you to work with your list pages and your card pages and we can also have a look with our different reports there then we can create or we can use Visual Studio as our development environment as well. Then we have application object tree that is again a development environment that will help you to create your databases, your reports, and so many different options while you are working with AX. Here we also have the options we can drag and drop. That means you can simply drag and drop and you can configure the settings so that's easy to work. And then it is possible that uh, you want to create a project and in a single project you can have multiple applications so that is also given in your AX. Now here we can see this is your client workplace like uh, this you can see here this is your title bar where you can see Microsoft Dynamics AX this is a machine name NYC hyphen DC1 and like in my environment if I have five or seven clients are connected so for each and every client we will get a new session here you can see your session and then it's your company name here CEU is my company then under which module we are working that is your accounts payable or we can see a P and then this is your area page when you will click on the file menu then you will get our drop-down list there where you can see different options and in the left side you have your navigation pane where you can see your area pages then when you will expand your common and different things you will get these things now this is your content pane in your content pane you may have the uh, common area generals then you can see you have your reports here then setup periodic and inquiries and even in your content pane you can also see your role center pages actually your role center pages are nothing they are your SharePoint pages so we can also configure our role center page and lower role center page is always uh, dependent on the uh, users like if I am from the admin department I may want some other options here if you are from HR department definitely for you some other options will be here so role center page is dependent on the you can see uh, based on the users now let me connect with the virtual environment so that I can show you how exactly you can connect with your AX whenever you will connect with your virtual environment it is possible that on the desktop you may get this shortcut or I will uh, let you know that we have other shortcut as well that you can simply write on your run command and then you will able to connect so let me connect this see this is your 
AX environment and here you can see I have home, accounts payable, AR, GL, budget. So means these are your different modules. When you will click here, you can see you, you can customize your navigation pane options as well. So let me click, let me click on uh, AP. And then when you will click here, you can see I have exactly the same environment. You can see here, this is your title bar, then this is your address bar, this is your file menu, navigation, and when you will click on any, let's say, I want to see all vendors information. So I can simply click here, and it will open a list of all the vendors in my AX. So right now, I'm just giving you a overview how you can connect with your AX environment and how you can have a look about your vendors, your customers, and even if you want to create a new vendor, this is your action tab. So you just need to click here and then you can connect with your different actions and then you can create vendors, you can edit the settings and you can have all these set, uh, options here. Now. This is your AX rich client. Now, in your development one, that means we want to create our own tables. We want to create our own relationships. So for that, we need a workplace. That is your AOT. Uh, simply click Control D. That will open our development environment for you. Or what we can see here, you will click on this icon and then new development workspace. It will open our AOT for you. Here you can see. Actually my resolution is a little bit large. Now this is your ab application object tree where you can create and manage different options. When you will expand your data dictionary, here you can have a look, you have tables, if you want, you can see all the existing tables. Let's say, I have here CUS table. So when you will expand your CUS table, you will see all the fields there and you can create new fields, you can edit the fields and you can see all the properties here. Just like this, we can create our own table because definitely, uh, if I want to create a new table and I'm a developer, so I must need permission from you to create our own tables as well. Once you are done with your table, even uh, let me expand any table here, not only to create the table, once you are done with the table, then definitely I want to create a relationship between different tables. So for that purpose, what I need to do, I need to create the relationships. So here you can see you have your relationship option, options. Then if you want to create indexes, because we know that if I want to search the data, so for that purpose, we need to create the indexes. So we can create our indexes here. Then once you are done with your table, then it is possible that you want to create your different table collections, then extended types. Here you can see I have the SSRS reports option as well. So one by one, we will cover each and every topic in this particular course. Today, I just wanted you to uh, get a familiar with uh, AOT environment as well as your AX rich client. Other than that, like if you are working with a big organization, and you are saying that, okay, my uh, employees want to connect with my AX from all over the world. That means you want to create a portal. So for that, you can use your enterprise portal. Again, for that, you need the SharePoint. That's why in your first slide, they were saying integrated. That means your AX can work with your SQL Server, your SharePoint, and your some other third-party environments as well. So now let's back to our, like in my demonstration, I just give you the example for your all vendors. Here they are giving you the example for the customer list. Like 
this is your action pane, here you have your filter pane, here in the grid they are giving you all the informations. Then for each and every customer, if you want detailed information, then you have your preview pane here. Then this is your fact box, like again the uh, extra information about your different customers, you can have a look here. Then, your AX follows three tier architecture where we have client, we have server, that is a kind of your business logic here, and then the third tier is your database. So as I told you that for AX, we have AXDB, that is responsible for your data, as well as model store, then what are the processing we need to perform? For that we have a application object server. Here your application object services are running and they are responsible to retrieve the information or request from the client and then pass out, perform their task and then pass that request to your database. Then whatever the data we want, let's say I want to see uh, the details of the customer so they will fetch the customer information and then with the help of your rich client or with the help of your enterprise portal, we will be able to see our list. So in three tier architecture, first one is your client from where users can send the request. Then your application object is running application object services that is responsible to perform all the business logic and the third level is your database where actually you have your data. Other than that, we have the extended architecture. Like I told you that not only the OLTP database, we can work with your reports as well as cubes. So for the report, you can use your SQL Server reporting services database and for your SSAS, like if you want to store your data in multi-dimensional format, let's say your cubes, or I hope you are aware about key performance indicators. Like, uh, okay, if my uh, performance is uh, greater than 80%, it will give me a green light. If it is between 60 and 18, then orange. And if it is less than 60, that means I'm not doing good. It will give you a uh, red, right? So that kind of things comes under your key performance indicator. Again, for that your SSAS database is responsible. So here you can see your AX database contains your AX data as well as the model store. So this is your database architecture then. Application object server where you have web service adapter that is actually responsible to connect with your clients, retrieve the data. Then you have X plus plus runtime where you all the processing take place. If I have multiple clients, so who will able to manage that? You have your session management and then you have your security. So in this diagram, you can see that your AOS is taking these three uh, layers to perform their task. Then as I told you, we can use Visual Studio for our development purpose or you can use Morfax IDE, you can use AOT or you can use Rich Client. Then it is possible that you want to work with your MS Office, like your Word, Excel, Power Pivot. They have support here and then you have some other applications like your SharePoint Enterprise Portal. If you have a help server for that you need to con configure IIS and then if you want to integrate with some third this is. And if I'm talking about third party applications, I need .NET Business Connector. That is a kind of provider that allow you to connect with your application object server. This is your extended architecture. Then let's continue with our SQL Server database. First one is your OLTP database that contains your Microsoft Dynamics AX that includes your model store and then you have your BI databases. So BI databases means that will store the information about your reports and your cubes. So in your BI databases we have SQL Server reporting database and we have SQL Server analysis server database that is your cubes. 
then if you remember in the diagram I told you that your AOS contains your X++ runtime where we can execute our codes then for the security we have the session management and we have your web services as well so these are the options that your AOS contains then for your clients you have your rich client like uh, if you remember when I just opened the AX environment that was your rich client if you have SharePoint configured with you you can also use enterprise portal or we can say EP then we have Microsoft Office you can use some third-party applications as well and for the connector we are using dotnet business connectors other than that we need to configure your IIS if you want to work with your help server for your enterprise portal we need the SharePoint then we have help server and we have the web services actually as I told you that in this module they are just giving you the overview and for each and every component we have different modules where we will discuss for these components in detail and if you remember again I uh, just show you in the demonstration how you can connect with your AOT so if you remember exactly the same environment was there you can see here you have your data dictionary when you will expand your data dictionary you will see these options then classes forms re uh, reports menus menu items so these are the topics that we will cover once we will connect with our AOT now let's say I want to search for a specific term or uh, I want to work with the help server and if you are using multilingual environment definitely if I'm writing any specific word in English US it doesn't mean that exactly the same text would be for French and for German as well so for that you have a labels and for each and every term they will provide you a code and then whenever you will uh, write any text internally they will convert that text in your labels in your codes and then they have the code they compare code and based on that whatever the result they will get they will give you reward back so means we uh, for each and every labels they have the code pages and then whenever you want to uh, search for a help then they will compare text with your code pages and based on that they will give you the result so this is about your labels here you can see text whatever I want to uh, search translated to the other languages and this is helpful if you are working in multilingual environment new label files and languages can be created by developers it is possible that right now you have configured your environment only for English US later you want to expand your company in your friend uh, France in and Germany so for that you also need to add different languages who is responsible for this your developers so developers will create new label files there they will also add different languages